Frank Sinatra's favourite toast was, May you live to be a hundred, and may the last voice you hear be mine. Well, today the often controversial crooner would have turned 100, and 17 years after his death, his legacy over seven tours of Australia is still going strong and controversial. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. I can only uh, judge on what he's reported to have said, and I find what he's uh, reported to have said repugnant. When that shark fights with his teeth, dear. You think of, say, women who are going to that concert. I don't think that they would like to feel that if they had a daughter working in the press that uh, she had been described as a prostitute by Mr Sinatra. I, I don't think that uh, that sort of thing can be tolerated. Here come the bad man. Very bad man. The Australian press makes the Australia a hot spot for an artist of your magnitude. There's the previous occasion they tried to give us a hard time as possible. I don't really see why you should you should forgive and forget. Oh, I don't know. I I think that uh, uh, I I think that 24 hours later it's all over. It's just gone in 24 hours. If that's their attitude constantly, I feel sorry for them. And did it, my Well, for more on Frank Sinatra, the age journalist Neil McMahon joins us live from Melbourne. And Neil, if Frank Sinatra were with us today, what do you think he'd be making of all this fuss? Look, I think he would be absolutely honoured and flattered, I would imagine. He's 100 years old today and he had an amazing career up until his sort of late 70s. He died about 82, I think. Um, the fact that we're still talking about the man at 100, um, you know, a fellow who was born in 1915 who is still, you know, Lady Gaga paid tribute to him last week along with a lot of other young artists and I think he'd be thrilled. I would imagine he'd be absolutely delighted to still be considered relevant after all these years. Now you've been looking into Sinatra's links to Australia for the Good Weekend magazine. Just how yeah. was his relationship with Australia? There were some tumultuous times uh, in the early years. There were, well, Frank toured here seven times people don't realize that everyone remembers the famous 74 tour that you were just uh, uh, playing clips of there with bob hawk and so on he toured here seven times from 55 to 91 36 years we went through eight prime ministers in that time um frank went through i think three wives um he every tour had a story to it an amazing story there was scandal there was romance there was you know, all sorts of things. And then in the end, in 91, he came, uh, you know, when he was in his dotage, I suppose, and a bit doddery, but he came and did his final show here at Rod Labor, which is where I'm standing. This was where his very final show was, which the ABC broadcast live. They called it the final concert. And um, his first show and his last show in Australia were both in Melbourne. The first one at West Melbourne Stadium in January 55, and the last one here in March 91. Now, Neil, how did you first stumble across good old Blue Eyes? <laughs> How did I stumble across him? I was raised on him. We were, we were, we had no choice. My, my mother adored Frank Sinatra, and um, so we, he, he was just. I can't remember not knowing Sinatra's voice or face or, or anything. So I, um, which I'm glad of. I saw him twice when I was young, um, on his last tour and his, his second to last tour. So which was a, a privilege. He was not, you know, at his best, but, you know. Um, yeah, he's been around all of my life, and I think a lot of people are like that. He's, he he uh, crosses generations and, you know, uh, four or five, six generations maybe now. Well, that's the thing, is it? Because there's a lot of younger generations who know Frank Sinatra's songs, they can sing along to them. He does transcend the generations. He seems to. And he, he sort of, in the, in the 80s and 90s, he kind of became really hip again when people like Bono and uh, and so on embraced him and he did a duets album that, that went to number one in his 70s with a lot of younger stars and I think he's still you know kind of regarded well. as that old chairman of the board thing is um, is still fairly strong he's the original rat packer you know he was hip he was cool um, and he he just never seemed to lose that and uh, he, he still seems to have it he's um, 100 years old we're still talking about him now, Neil, you're not alone being down in Melbourne and uh, having a fascination with Frank Sinatra. The International Sinatra Society is based in Melbourne. Is that um, Australia's way of apologising, perhaps, for the siege of Sinatra back in 1974? 
I don't, I don't know if it's a way of apologising, but the, the International Sinatra Society is a, a very devoted band of Sinatra fans, and um, they meet bi-monthly. They have meetings at uh, the Box Hill RSL, um, and they're having a 100th birthday party tonight, in fact, so uh, for Frank. So, And there will be uh, some glasses raised and some songs sung, I would imagine, um, and a very special night for those people. They're people who, again, spanning generations from, you know, people in their 20s to to uh, older people. Um, I think the, the record holder there is Paul Jennings, I think, the comedian who has saw Sinatra, I think, 22 times. He travelled the world in his spare time um, watching Sinatra perform, and I think he had 22 concerts under his belt by the end. Because there's a lot of uh, celebrations going on, not just in Melbourne tonight, but also around the world. And I think there's a few bars that have got a few signature drinks uh, in uh, a nod to Old Blue Eyes. And his there are, and, uh, well, Sinatra's uh, famous tipple was Jack Daniels, which is that they've actually released a special Sinatra edition um, that I think costs about um, $600 a bottle, I think, for a 700 ml bottle of the Sinatra stock, the Jack Daniels stock, uh, in his honour, because that was his favourite tipple. Um, and look, there'll be a lot of drinking. I think a lot of karaoke bars might um, uh, hear a few renditions of My Way in New York, New York tonight. Um, and yeah, there'll be there'll be parties all over the world. In, in the states, of course, there was a big tribute concert this week with uh, Lady Gaga and uh, Usher and Tony Bennett from Another Generation. And I think there'll be uh, there'll be stuff in New York. There'll be stuff in his hometown of Hoboken uh, in New Jersey. Um, and um, yeah, I think the world will uh, raise a glass and sing a song. Um, and I think everyone's got a, a favourite Sinatra song, so um, it'll be a good day. No, Akman, thank you very much. Enjoy the celebrations wherever you are. <laughs> we will. Thank you very much.